Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to uh, one of the games from Chessbra Invitational Tournament. Yes, that was another online tournament, Blitz tournament uh, with three minutes per player and two seconds incrementation per move. That was the time format. Uh, unfortunately, this was played uh, at the same moment where Steinitz Memorial, so I couldn't cover more games because, you know, even Steinitz Memorial had insane 30 games a day so uh, i had to choose some but here uh, i would like to tell you a bit about that so chess bra uh, is the twitch channel uh, they have very very nice one of the most popular twitch channels and they organize the tournament and that was the tournament for super grandmaster six uh, incredible strong players so we had fabiano caruana Jan Nepomniashi, Maxim Vasil Lagraf, Anish Giri, Alireza Firuzja, and believe me or not, and Alexander Grishuk. And Alexander Grishuk play at the same time in Steinitz Memorial and uh, Chessbra Invitational. However, it's not so easy because in Steinitz Memorial he got the last place. He did much better in Chessbra Invitational as he got um, into the semi final uh, where he lost to Alireza Firuzja. And if you are interested in Chessbra uh, Twitch, just, you know, write Chessbra, you will find them for sure. And I'm going to leave the, the link in the description. So uh, if you are lazy, just click and go and check. Uh, really incredible. I really recommend very nice stuff over there. Uh, and today I would like to show you the game uh, from the final where Alireza Firuzja, prodigy from Iran, uh, for now he's playing under FIDE club, like he has the problems with the Iranian uh, federation or maybe with the law in Iran uh, where he cannot play against, for example, Israeli players. So uh, it's kind of boycott and uh, we will see what will happen with Ali Reza. For many people, he's predicted as the future world champion. We will see how it's going. But uh, if you have opinion in this matter, um, I'm very interested. Do you think Alireza Firuzja really can become the world champion? He's only 16 years old, uh, but his blitz ranking already uh, is 2750. Very strong player. Uh, and today he's going to play as white. And his opponent, Anish Giri. Anish Giri is a very interesting person. He's, you know, a Russian Nepalese who uh, born in Russia, who raised in Japan, who live in Netherlands and who has the Georgian wife. So a really cosmopolitan person. And also, uh, if you follow Anish in Twitter, uh, he has a lot of, you know, self-distance, uh, sarcastic uh, humor, a very nice sense of humor. And uh, he is one of the most, I think, influential uh, grandmasters on Twitter. So if you haven't seen, I also leave the link in the description. So check it out. Uh, Anish Giri is 25 years old, he's ranking, uh, Blitz ranking 2752 and he's gonna play as black. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Uh, we have e4 by Alireza Firuzja, e5, knight f3, knight c6 and bishop b5. So Rui Lopez on the board, pretty uh, standard, one of the most popular opening. We have knight on f6, we have d3, we have bishop on c5 and here c3 is the most popular move preparing in the future d4 uh, maybe if needed the bishop can also to c2 so that's the ideas however here alireza firuzja go for bishop on a4 first so he doesn't wait for any a6 move with tempo and then attack with b5 uh, he just you know play bishop on a4 and okay we have castle by anish giri we have castle by alireza firuzja d6 and now c3 so all the ideas, structures are very, very similar and um, nothing new here. And knight on e7, knight b on d2 uh, and now bishop on b6. So Anish Giri don't want to wait for d4 uh, as d4 uh, would come with the tempo and the, the bishop would have to be moved to b6 anyway. So he do it before. Uh, we have rook on e1, now bringing the defender to e1, and now c6 with the similar idea like c3 was played by Alireza Firuzja. And here we have h3, important move because it take away the, the g4 square, so now, for example, the bishop can go to here and, and pin the, the knight. Uh, knight on g6, so remaneuvering the knight, now the knight watching uh, on f4 and probably want to jump there, uh, and now bishop on c 
uh, we have rook on e8 and now d4 d4 and look at the pawn on e4 it's overprotected by three pieces so d4 is played very very comfortable now uh, we have e takes on d4 c takes on d4 and now uh, it's very very strong pawn center and uh, black has to do something about that so anish giri undermined it a bit and he play e5 and here actually white doesn't have much choice here uh because probably they don't want to play with the isolated uh, queen pawn it's possible of course but uh, that's not really comfortable as the the black position is quite strong here uh, and already the, the pawn is blocked by another pawn so uh, definitely not not the classical uh, queen's isolated pawn uh, in this case so we have e5 so pushing the pawn and now the knight could go back but that would be very very passive blocking the bishop so doesn't make much sense knight h5 it's much more logical now can jump for example to f4 which is a uh, very natural very strong outpost for the knight uh, we have knight on b3 so now making some space to develop for the bishop and knight h on f4 so as i said this is very nice uh, spot for the for the knight uh, and for now it cannot be kicked because um, the pawn on h3 is hanging so uh, we have bishop on e3 by alireza firuja and here anish giri don't really like this pawn uh, on e5 it grabs too much space and uh, it's pretty annoying so we have f6 challenging that pawn but also uh, weakens the the position of the king as now we don't have the the pawn on f7 uh, so we have e takes on f6 queen takes on f6 and bishop f4 exchanging the bishop for the knight uh, so that's the move and also uh, now uh, we have the attack on the rook so black doesn't have much choice and we have rook on e1 with check queen on e1 and only now taking the bishop but how would you take this bishop with the knight or with the queen and it's a very important question if you take with the knight there is the problem queen on e8 with check and the only move is queen on f8 and now what would you do now this is the problem you have to take the bishop or go to h8 and now you're gonna lose the queen and the game so uh, queen on f4 was played by uh, anish giri and now we have bishop on g6 h takes on g6 so we have the pair of bishop playing against the pair of knights uh, and it's difficult to say what would be better here because it's all about you know uh, tactical nuances in this case in this game this is why this game is so interesting so uh, we have queen on e8 with check there is not much choice here king h7 is losing because uh, h4 and you cannot defend uh, that would be a check and after king move to h6 we would have a checkmate so uh, bishop g4 is the only move actually but losing the the rook and the game so uh, not the option queen on f8 was played and now white winning uh, the pawn uh, but it's not really winning the pawn because now uh, it's something you can learn from that game if you see um, the piece defended by by the pawn uh, and the pawn also defends another pawn uh, there are always some tactics to do so for example in this case the bishop can takes on h3 and now uh, if the pawn takes the bishop then of course uh, the queen can takes on the on f3 the knight so uh, of course uh, alireza firuja is not interested in this exchange he want to uh, develop the the last piece so we have rook on e1 uh, and now bishop retreat to f5 attacking the queen kicking the queen uh, from this square we have queen on h5 and now queen on f6 so it looks like black has pretty solid position now and anish giri will try probably to exchange some pieces you know to uh, because the attack starts to look like pretty annoying especially after a knight on g5 now this knight controls very important squares for the king so uh the last rank issues are pretty serious as the rook and the queen are looking at e8 there is no problem for now uh, there is no problem for now because there is the rook there is the queen which can you know go back to f8 so uh, not really a problem uh, but 
Anish Giri prefers to be more safe and he play bishop on g6, kicking the queen. We have queen on h4 and here is the critical moment. So black can play a lot of moves and a lot of moves are just good. Rook on f8 uh, with creating this battery and going for f2 is the most logical and active move. But also um, any other moves, you know, are, are, are great. So I don't know, bishop on d8 with the pressure on the on the knight. That would be interesting. Then uh, rook on e5 and, and that would be pretty interesting uh, continuation. However, in this position, believe me or not, but we have rook on e8 with the idea of exchanging the rook. So for example, rook on e8, bishop on e8, and now queen h7, king f8, knight has to retreat, knight f3, and the game can continue. The game can continue. Uh, very difficult to find any ideas here, so players would have to uh, wait for some blunders. However, after rook on e8, Alireza Firuzia found another idea. And this is actually a winning idea. So feel free to pause the video and find the winning idea for white. How to win in this position while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So uh, what's happening on the board? Let's see first what's happening on the board. So. Uh, Definitely we have this very strong knight and also we have this weakness on the 8th rank which is covered by the bishop. So if we could deflect the bishop that would be very nice. So what Alireza did is he sacrificed his queen, queen on h7 but everything is forced here because uh, King on f8 is not possible because of checkmate, so that's definitely not possible. The only move in this position actually is bishop on h7, and this is just forced. And now uh, we have rook on e8 with check, and now queen has nowhere to go. Uh, as, as I said, f7 is covered, so uh, queen on f8. Now we have rook on f8, uh, and after taking the rook, knight takes the bishop, and with the extra piece, of course, uh, white is winning. This is why in this position Anish Giri resigned the game, and he wrote on his uh, Twitter that uh, Grandpa Anish has to train chess much more as he cannot, you know, stand against the young Alireza Firuzia. So as you see, a um, very nice sense of humor uh, and, uh, and yeah, that was the game. And Alireza Firuzia won Chessbra Invitational 2020, so congratulations. Uh, and now uh, we don't have the, the online tournaments going right now. We are waiting for another Magnus Carlsen tournament. Uh, but for now, feel free to uh, leave some comments if you want me to uh, cover some games. Uh, I would like to follow your suggestion. Uh, so I'm very happy uh, to do that. And if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss any other quality content on my channel, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.